son of God Zilla is what we saw last night, but it is really cool together tonight with you, retards. Uh. Welcome back to Giant Monster Bullshit. I'm your host. We watched Son of Godzilla, yep. directed by Jun Fukuda, mm-hmm. that came out in 1967. You weren't looking at this and on your is computer, a are you? Japanese science fiction kaiju hey. film featuring Godzilla. Hey, this guy's looking at this stuff on his computer. This guy's a. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you seen this movie? I have seen this maybe once or twice when I was much, much younger. You haven't seen it any any time recently? I think we, like, uh, a few years ago, we started we like started it and then for some reason we like stopped it like maybe a fourth of the way through i've seen this movie probably more times than any other godzilla movie really yeah this was a childhood favorite i had like four favorites that i would get from blockbuster like over and over again Mm -hmm. and well this one was just one that i owned this was one that i owned outside of that collection that we both had uh, where, mm-hmm. you know, it was just a standalone DVD, which was rare for me to have back then. Mm-hmm. But I watched this movie so many times. But this was probably the first time I watched it all the way through just with the sub. Mm-hmm. I always watched it dubbed so my parents didn't have to read it to me. Okay. Um, I remember this is uh, one of the... One of the ones that was at my uh, Blockbuster, the mm. Blockbuster in Bay St. Louis, and I got it, and I remember watching it and not really having much of a feeling one way or the other about it. Really? It wasn't one I was really crazy about, but I can see I can see how it would be like really appealing to a younger person, but for whatever reason, yeah, I didn't. It's a real kid-friendly movie. It totally is, yeah. The past few movies I've been arguing that uh, they haven't been the transition into Godzilla's mm-hmm. Good role guy. as a hero. Yeah. This one, there's not much arguing. I mean, he he's certainly not a hero. Yeah, but he's one. not the bad guy. He's more of the good guy than he's been so far, I'd say. Yes, yeah. He's caring for a child. Yeah, yeah. The whole time. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't really pay too much attention to mm-hmm. the yeah. people as much he's not going out of his way to not kill them yeah but he's the not... only the only monsters he fights are threats to the people yeah but he's just kind of like protecting them by coincidence yeah he does smash the fuck out of their village yeah but he didn't mean it um, he didn't mean nothing by it yeah he he's a good boy yeah yeah he w- he would never do this i'm literally shaking so this is a not A direct sequel to that last one, but it shares a lot in common with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They both not only feature islands, but take place entirely on islands, basically. This one, even more, they never touch land outside of the island. They were both directed by Jun Fukuda. I think the story was either that Ishiro Honda was, like, busy, Mm -hmm. or that his Godzilla movies had, had, like, stopped making money. So they... Got somebody else. Yeah, they got Jun Fukuda to start doing these, which is why they have like a different feel to them. Mm -hmm. I guess if you're just jumping in and you're kind of jumping around this series, you're probably not going to be able to tell the difference that much. Yeah. But going from that string of movies, which Ishiro Honda didn't direct all of them. I think there were like one or two. Mm -hmm. I know he didn't do Raids again. Yeah. But most of those had a very similar like... We start out with reporters, and then we watch the monsters fight on a hillside and maybe destroy some cities, and there's aliens. Mm-hmm. And now these past two have just been islands and, like, giant versions of regular animals yeah. and scientists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a uh, very tropical vibe, once again. But the, they, are too, they are different from one another. Yeah, no, it's not a carbon copy. It's not a rehash, I would say. Just similar. Yeah. There's a lot of DNA. Uh, you can definitely tell they're made by the same guy. It's different enough to keep you engaged, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'd say. You, you don't feel like you're just getting the same thing regurgitated. Totally. Okay, the first thing uh, I'd like to talk about is the, the set. And maybe it's just because it's a nostalgic thing. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it so many times. The scientists have, like, a, a bunch of, like, very colorful buildings. Yes. Set up in a very soundstage mm-hmm. setup where they're yeah. all, like, 
you know, none of them are in front of each other, so you can see them <laughs> yeah. all when they have Everything. a wide shot. Yeah, uh, there's a nice big bunch of trees around that nest yeah. up the little uh, cracks in everything. There's matte painting behind everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I just really, it has a lot of character. I like that it changes over the course of the movie because Godzilla destroys it, and then you see the characters like walking around in the wreckage of that, and eventually they move into that cave. Yeah. And I think that's all done really well. Yeah, it is. It's it's pretty cool. It's it's one that I felt like going in, I was going to be bored by it, but I really wasn't. It was a pretty pretty solid. Let's I guess let's talk about the plot. It's got a pretty decent uh, story and a set of characters. Like this works all right as a like a real movie. Yeah, it's got like decent pacing and everything. It's got all the hallmarks of uh, half decent storytelling. Nobody really changes. Nobody goes through like an arc in the only. Uh... The only conflict besides, well, I guess it is the only conflict because all the other conflict stems from it is the monsters yeah. just being there. But they are likable. Yeah. I like the the main dude, forgot his name. And, Goro. Yeah, Goro. Goro and Psycho. Yeah. I like them, and maybe this is also just nostalgia or something, but this cast and characters have something that isn't really replicated in a ton of Godzilla movies, mm -hmm. but they're really... They feel really at home in the plot. Totally, yeah. The story's not really being pushed forward by the monsters. I mean, it kind of is. I but mean, it's, but it's, not in a way that's forced, though. It's being altered by the monsters, but ultimately the people are there for like their, si their weather experiment. Mm -hmm. And they kind of see that out, and it just evolves into using that as a weapon against the monsters. Mm -hmm. Or not, not even as a weapon against the monsters, but a, a way of getting themselves off the island mm -hmm. really so it just feels really natural yeah they're there on that island to do an experiment and then their experiment gets messed up because of manila being there mm -hmm. and then the monsters happen it's just a nice back and forth of like this happens because of this and then they have to do this because it, it all just works really well i'm just it's it's doesn't have that thing where it's like oh these people are like clearly going here to encounter a monster yeah. whether they know it or not totally these movies uh especially earlier on have i mean all throughout these movies even in the newer even in the very newest ones uh these movies sometimes struggle to unite a human story uh with uh a monster especially when there's like a monster fight where you have to find a way to bring these monsters together yeah. And they really struggle with it and you know to even like get a story and like make it happen where it's like not like completely ridiculous is hard enough but they often like fall into a pit of like just feeling like it's it's two different movies kind of smashed together these two like there's nothing to really yeah they just kind of collide at some points yeah this one did a pretty good job of it really kind of flowed pretty well in comparison with a lot of these earlier movies yeah people and godzilla there were some weird uh editing choices where definitely the events of like a previous day would continue even during like it, even when it's established that like days have passed mm -hmm. but I, that's probably more editing really because it doesn't change much of the story yeah there's a couple day for night shots mm -hmm. when they're going to see the spider yeah um there's a part when uh there's a couple spots where it's like goes into slow motion for a second i don't know if that was our dvd or that might have been my dvd my dvd is so fucking old i don't know it's kind of like the matrix but yeah there's a couple of cut in the middle of an action type yeah. cuts yeah it works pretty decently just on a very basic level the characters aren't great uh well, the reason it, it might sort of flow organically is that godzilla kind of really isn't the focal point in this one he's kind of almost a side like element manila is more of a focal focal point than godzilla is yeah but even then he kind of happens he's even to the side a little bit it feels like nothing really is well they've had i mean that last movie godzilla wasn't the focal point yeah yeah i know and that and it was much more of a a forced yeah it thing. totally was and there were several like even space amoeba wasn't quite as well like the yeah. the balance of the monsters and humans even though it was like it wasn't bad and it was a good movie but it it wasn't as smooth or like as perfected as it was here yeah totally let's talk about some of these suits that appear we get okay. a lot of new monsters. Really, we only get a couple. We, we, we get, get a, a, few. a duplicate 
of well yeah i guess that that was one thing as a kid seeing this movie camacaris was like already a giant mantis yeah which i always forget i always just thought like the only thing on the island were uh praying mantises and they got turned big and it's weird because the praying mantises are already like bigger than people yeah and then the weather experiment makes mu- them mutates them into yeah. giant you know kaiju size yeah praying mantises and then kumanga is already big yeah it's just been buried it's already on the same scale as the praying mantises and mm-hmm. then they're all on the same scale as godzilla so it's a little weird yeah they got some pretty uh baby godzilla is born at one point he comes out of an egg and all the uh mantises are beating the egg to get it open and it pops open and a slimy little uh manila yeah comes like out. proto manila yeah proto manila there's nobody in the suit. It's just yeah, a puppet. It's just like, a puppet, and he's uh, he's goddamn disgusting. Uh, he's, very round. Yes, quite. Very, every edge on Manila, even when he gets a little older, is pretty much all round. He's got no teeth, and he uh, he's get it, it, like immediately all the mantises are beating him up too. Like he doesn't get a chance. This this Manila is born into this world, getting his ass beat. Yeah, yeah. Manila is pretty uh, very babyish. Uh, so yeah, he starts out as like a little puppet, and then Godzilla comes and gets him. Manila gets another suit. Do they have like a kid playing Manila? Now I believe, uh, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings here, but I think they have a midget playing manila I, I think that's the right word yeah yeah um, um well that's interesting i mean when one walks and walks up to me and punches me in the nuts and tells me to say otherwise midget's just such a fitting word not to get political on here uh <laughs> sorry um a dwarf yeah i've got the page pulled up okay uh, a dwarf if you want to call him that much better yeah personally i think of like the the stocky lord of the rings guys when i hear dwarf yeah i always think of mythical creatures when i hear dwarf so midget (laughs) we're back to where we started yeah i've always liked i mean i understand it's like really weird looking Mm -hmm. not what people would expect from godzilla's son but i've always just really had a soft spot for that design he's got like kind of a heart-shaped head mm. and he's always got like a big grin on his face but i like it there's nothing i can really say to back it up i do like that his back has like the beginnings of yeah like, i know earlier it's cool like they grow when he gets older I yeah that's pretty cool and uh, people have said and i know this doesn't really have much to do with this suit but i'll try to tie it back in it's been a discussion among shitheads as to if he's godzilla's real son or not Mm. and i think in some like old ass book commissioned by toho or whatever they say that he's not actually a same the same member of the species it's just like a little baby Oh, yeah, maybe something, something and Godzilla's, but that's even if it's not Godzilla's but that's direct. Bullshit. Child, yeah, that is such bullshit. <laughs> even if he's not Godzilla's direct son, he's got to be a member of the same species because he's got those spines something on his back. Something close, I mean, you and know. he's formatted the same, basically. Yeah, two legs, two arms, and a tail. He can breathe the same fucking fire. Yeah, Manila's. Uh, I can't say I share the uh, same sentimentality for Manila. I've never really liked Manila. Uh, I always thought he was kind of dumb, not to get political. He's totally just a a way of getting kids. Totally. If to I, if I a... if they maybe caught caught me with it a couple years earlier, like just maybe a year or two, I might have been into him. He's just one of those Jar Jar characters. Totally. That's like Absolutely. Only for kids to enjoy. Yeah, for the kids to nothing. Clap. I like Manila because he's small like me. If I didn't watch this movie so much as a kid, I'd probably be really annoyed really? watching it today. Yeah, he makes those awful like <laughs> awful like donkey sounds and shit. Yeah, he makes like dog sounds a lot of the uh, times. Sounds like a like processed recording of like a dog. Awful sounds for the most part. There's a couple times when Definitely. He, he does like a babyish version of Godzilla's roar. Mm-hmm. Which I think they did a good job of. But yeah. that's- when I was a kid I, I didn't think Manila was cool. The thing about that I liked about Godzilla is that he was cool. Manila was not cool. I liked uh I liked that in like later ones and like the last of like the Heisei ones, he like grows up into like a real Godzilla. Yeah. 
I think I identified with Manila and that I had a dad too. Yeah, I definitely understand it. Like I'm saying, I, it's not like I don't I don't get it or anything, but it just didn't catch me at the right time. I didn't have a father at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but nowadays, I can't say Manila annoyed me too much. Like just watching it today, got a real dumb face. Let me say this, if you guys are looking to make fun of this movie, I can definitely see you having fun with how Manila looks. Mm-hmm. Uh, because as you know it's it's always hilarious to make fun of how someone looks yeah almost always unless you're making fun of me it's pretty silly he's got like a it, it, once he gets growing up a little bit in the couple days after he's born he gets a few teeth uh, they're really snaggly do you want to move on to the other suits yeah let's talk about them uh so we've already talked about the mantises or no we didn't really talk about the mantises we just not the suits at least yeah um there are like uh just puppets once again yeah they? yeah uh, they've got like two ba- they've they're got too a few skinny of them. to be yeah there's they're... three to begin with and godzilla kills two of them right off the bat yeah and, and then the one saved sticks around yeah yeah they've it's... got like strings very obvious strings for the mantises and they're always they've got they're these two really little... clear on this dvd i don't yes. know if it's just being upscaled to 4k but i don't remember it being a problem well like, way back when kamanga like i didn't notice any i i mean i saw the strings but like I didn't really, they weren't as apparent as with the mantises, and they had a lot of strings on, they had to have had a lot of strings on Kamanga. Yeah, uh, at least eight. At least <laughs> Yeah, so these mantises are, they're just kind of yanking their arms around a lot of the time. I think they look all right. Yeah, they look all right. They got a pretty good movement. Uh, They, they look pretty threatening at times when they're, you know, it's easy to do bugs, I think, because they're very, uh, bugs are, it's a well-known fact that bugs do not uh, express much, but, you know, they don't really have uh. Yeah, you know you, that you can just kind of have you can just slap eyes on them, big eyes, and you don't have to worry about pupils or anything. You know they're just kind of emotionless. Yeah, creatures, so it's kind of easy to easier to pull them off. I think they're a little stiff at some points. There's that quality that bugs have where there's just like so many moving parts. Yeah, they're always kind of squirming. Can't quite be replicated, but mm-hmm. they got close with Kumanga. Yeah, I, I was gonna say. Yeah, let's just move on to... Kamanga looks pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I'd um, say... If you gave me 10 million yen and said, make make me a spider puppet that moves realistically, or like semi-realistically, the best you can do, I would come nowhere near this, mm-hmm. uh, if you can believe it. You know, I'm, it's well known that I'm a puppet maker. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, This it's like pretty impressive at points. Like, the, like I was saying, the strings aren't very visible, and he's kind of like moving around a lot. He's always moving his legs around. Yeah. Uh, he's got these two little uh, mandibles that are always kind of moving around. Yeah. He and Godzilla have an okay fight, I guess. Yeah, it's decent. Yeah. The, the fights in here are not great. No, but they're not awful they're subpar for the series really like there's never any point where i was like nothing irritating yeah there's no like i mean like the sounds aren't great but they aren't like ear grating so the the last suit we need to talk about oh yeah godzilla is godzilla it's a little different i'd argue and i i love this movie to death i'd argue this is maybe the ugliest godzilla ever put to film possibly his head it's, it's tall like, tall he's got a tall head yeah it's 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 weird he's got like his big mouth he's got like the whole bottom section of his head is like his mouth Mm -hmm. you know and then we go and the section between like the top of his head and this bottom mouth part is like just eyes big fucking eyes and they like kind of wrap around you know the side of his head and it's just awful he's just so he's fucking ugly um, there's a couple points. There's one part when he's looking down at Kamanga. Uh, it's like one of those memes of, you know, what you see, what she sees. Yeah. And for some reason, he looks down at Kamanga, and then he gets his eyes stabbed. I mentioned many episodes ago, I guess at this point, that there was a point where Godzilla, like, design-wise, he strays so far mm-hmm. from the original design that he's hardly recognizable as Godzilla. Godzilla evolved until he stopped looking like Godzilla and they had to sort of put it back on track. And it, it, if you didn't see his profile, he is unrecognizable almost. He's really, it's the worst when you're like head on with him. Yeah. Really, really bad. God, his head's too tall. Yeah. I mean, from like neck, because the Japanese guy's head is in Godzilla's neck. Yeah. And then you got like a 
head on top that's already like pretty long but the, to have the audacity to make the head even bigger is uh, not a good idea and the mouth doesn't take up as much room as it should my thing is like traditional godzilla design is gonna be mainly you got a big mouth and then you got a little head you know head and eyes forehead mm -hmm. and everything on top of it and what they did is they pushed his snout back in mm -hmm. and then elongated his head yes to where his mouth is taking up only about 30 percent of his head i don't know what you would call this but he's not got a lizard like or dragon like thing going on anymore yeah it, it's it's weird he just looks like fucking some awful fucking cookie monster ass shit this is definitely one of the ones the the designs as a kid that really kind of turned me off design wise i mean also because i just like the design of godzilla and like the millennium ones he's got like very sharp lizardy things yeah they like really Final knew Wars. what they were going for Definitely, yeah. They were like, Godzilla's like a lizard dragon cool guy. This one, I was too dumb to realize that there was a difference <laughs> between all the Godzillas, like even the 98 one. Mm -hmm. Like, I knew there was a difference, but like, I was just like, yeah, it's all the same one. Really? I, I, I'm not trying to act like I was like super aware of it, but I definitely did like notice a difference. And I was like, ah, I don't like the way this one looks. I'd say I noticed a difference, but it never made a difference it never went past that right, just awareness yeah i was just like okay but it's like still the same godzilla he's just like look it looks a little different next time but it is worth mentioning there are two godzilla suits in this movie and the other one is only is in the very beginning shots there's a shot of godzilla in the water in front of an airplane uh it, it's it's only shots of godzilla in water where you see the second suit mm -hmm. and it looks like it's just the leftover suit from the last movie because mm -hmm. he looks very different. His eyes are in different places. And in that one, his eyes are smaller it's very clearly two different suits. If I had to guess why it's probably just because the one they made for this wasn't made for water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Because he's only seen on land in the, the ugly version. Yeah. Got the other one's it. pretty ugly too. Yeah, no, that we're not uh we're not ignoring how ugly that other one is. If you guys were really worried about that, we're not hypocrites. Right. Um <laughs> if there's one thing we're not, it's hypocrites. If there's one thing I never do, it's go back on my word. Absolutely never. Yeah, the other one's pretty ugly, but this one's like so it get it's just gotten so much more paper mache y, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's, it's awful. The last one was pretty bad. This one's got some eyes Again, too, they like doing this cool trick where they have eyes on them sometimes that'll open and close as they go to sleep. Eyelids. That looks okay. I eyelids, sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they he does have, have like eyes, eyes in this one. Yeah. They did. They decided to do the eyes again. Yeah, which is a strange choice in my opinion. Yeah, Godzilla takes some fucking naps in this. Yeah, movie. Yeah, that's one thing. If you love about Godzilla, that's a, another similarity between the last one. Uh, he's taking a fucking nap. Yeah, Godzilla uh, sleeps. Godzilla sleeps for the first act of this no, no, he last He sleeps movie. on land. Yeah, he doesn't, I always, I don't know. If if I had it my way, you wouldn't have Godzilla Asleep? sleeping. Like, just taking a nap. Like, 2014, it's like, all right, he's exhausted. He just falls down, passes out. Yeah. Or hibernates or something. Yeah, it's just uh, exhaustion. Even in, the la even in the last one, it's like, oh, he's hibernating. It's like, okay, all right, sure. Yeah. Lizard hibernating. All right. But yeah, he just sleeps like a guy yeah. in this one where He's, he like yeah. lies down, puts his head on a rock like yeah. it's a fucking Flintstones pillow. <laughs> yeah, his kid's fucking with him while he's trying to sleep, yeah. sitting on his tail and shit. Godzilla beats his child in this, a couple, or threatens to. He smacks him a couple times with his tail on accident. There was a... There's some pretty comical points where uh, Manila gets the shit kicked out of him. Or just kind of bonked in a few yeah. comical ways. In ways Bopped. that... Yeah. And that confuses me a little bit because it's like you want kids to be into, you kind of want them to identify with Manila like you did. Like, I yeah. have a dad. I am a kid. I'm smaller than most people. I get my ass beat. I get, <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. It's like, why would, if, if you want these kids to like identify with Manila, you know, why are you beating his ass so much? Are you expecting the kids to go like, aha, he got hit? Maybe, maybe they it, do. I don't maybe know. Maybe it's for the adults. Maybe it's like they want, they know he's annoying. So they want, yeah, here's him getting the shit beat out of him. Maybe that's why he didn't annoy you so much. It was funny. 
It yeah. was funny. <laughs> when, like, okay, I'm not acting like it wasn't funny. Yeah. He gets, like, hit. Whenever, like, they actually, like, slam something into the one of these suits, it's always funny. It's, it's always, always accompanied by, like, a really tinny yeah. sound effect. Yeah, I like that he comes out of the womb kind of getting his ass beat. They're, like, smacking him and, like, the little puppets, like, getting indentions where they're hitting him. It's really funny. He's, like, screaming. Yeah, Godzilla, uh, at one point, he's trying to teach him how to... He's educating his son, as uh, Psycho yeah. uh, says. Psycho is a uh, a native, uh, or not, sh- she's Japanese. Uh, how did Psycho get on the island? Her father was there when... World not, War II? Not when World War II was going on. The war? They said he's he was there in 1955. Either that or, like, everybody else left in 1955. He he was there, and, like, I guess she was born on the island? I guess. that because uh, she Yes, seems... they must have been there since World War II. 1955 just must have been when everybody left. I was thinking it would have been cool if she still thought it was World War II, and she's like, how's... How's uh how's Nagasaki? How's Hiroshima? Yeah. Are they how are they doing? <laughs> are they still around? <laughs> I've got a lot of family in both Nagasaki and Hiroshima. She's like just on the island. She's friends with Manila. Uh right off the bat, she throws him some giant lemon fruit. Uh and he catches it. He's, there's nothing else that Manila is. It's a good catch. And uh Godzilla's like teaching him how to blow fire. It's kind of a pretty well known one, I think. You know, he's blowing the little circles of fire. Yeah, his signature move. And uh he's not doing it quite like Godzilla is. And Godzilla like raises a hand. He's like, If you don't do it, okay, and then he steps on Manila's tail, he stomps on Manila's tail, really. And then he blows fire. And I thought it was gonna come back and Manila was gonna be able to like blow fire towards the, towards the end. Like mm-hmm. just freely. It doesn't really happen. Well, he kills the. He helps Godzilla kill Kumanga. Yeah. He just has to put his mind to it. Mm -hmm. Two things that you'll hear shitheads tell you about this movie. Mm -hmm. They never say Manila in this movie, even though that's like decidedly the name. Some people like put up a fight. I think James Rolfe is one of those people where he's like, they never say Manila. So I know for a fact that they had like a naming ceremony. Mm -hmm. I forgot exactly how they chose it. But they had like a ceremony after the movie stopped shooting, I think, where they had like both Godzilla and Manila like in costume. Like they had the, you know, the midget in the costume right. and they like dressed him up in like some ceremonial like Japanese clothes. Oh, cool. And they announced the name. I forgot how they picked it. I think it was voted on or something. But the uh, groundhog lo- looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> Manila came out and saw Shadow. shadow. Yeah. <laughs> Want to talk about this island? Yeah, uh, what's this island called? Did you, did you write it down? Or no, anything? I remember this island you name. Remember this just island name off okay. the top of my head, Salgel Island. Salgel. Yeah. Okay. And they do a pretty good job where they have like an opening scene of some people on a plane, and they're like, "There's this interference. Where's it coming from?" And they're like, "Is it coming from Godzilla?" It must have been Godzilla because they also almost crashed into Godzilla. Yes. But they're like, "No, it's coming from seven o'clock." So they draw a little cartography on their map and they're like there's nothing here oh wait and they zoom in and it's like a tiny island Solgel island there's nothing there wait a minute there's a small island Solgel island and i remember because they say it a lot in the dub Mm -hmm. uh we mentioned this is really interesting in the sub version of the movie there's a plant on the island called Salgel parsley. Yes. In the dub, it's Salgel spinach. Very interesting. Very interesting. And a very Im- integral part of what we do here. Uh, they're on the plane, and uh, there's a pretty good part where this dude just got like a radio. He's like, the radio's not working. And they're like, what? Why not? And he's like, uh, there's interference. And uh, he's he's like, it's, it's not like a radio wave. It's more like a... A brainwave. It's more like a brainwave. Yeah. It's like, really? You can tell that? <laughs> you, know what a, you know what a brainwave sounds uh, like? Yeah. Do, do we know about brainwaves at this point in the fucking 1960s? How much does a common airplane... How much do you need to know about brainwaves? I mean, all right. On, pretty cut really? and dry. Yeah. It's not there's that... brainwaves and then there's not brainwaves. Right. Any questions? <laughs> the island is probably like 50-50, like actual on location... And then sets, they do a lot of like running around in a real, what appears to be a real jungle e biome. Yeah. Uh, a lot of beaches. And here it looks, even though I had a Blu ray of that last movie and a DVD of this one, like the sand in the water looks a lot nicer. On, I mean, not definition wise, but it just, the colors and everything. 
it looks really nice. Like, Salgill Island looks like a place I'd like to be. There's a, a scene where Furukawa, mm-hmm. he's the one who keeps freaking out and wanting to go home. Yeah, he's really grumpy. <laughs> he cries at the end. There's a part where he, he gets fed up, and he, like, grabs a gun, and he starts shooting at people, and he runs away, and he, like, it's the part when Godzilla gets introduced, but he, like, runs onto the beach, and he's, like, in the water, and he trips, and he's, like, got his hands in the water and stuff. And I remember as a kid thinking, like, that is that looks so nice. Like, <laughs> that water looks so cooling. Because in the whole movie, they're, like, all sweaty and talking yeah. about how hot they are. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's little puddles of, like, this nice, clear water on this sandy beach. And I remember thinking, like, that must feel so good. <laughs> yeah, island-wise, I have the same feelings towards this island as I did with the last one, where it, it's just, it's where the whole movie takes place, so I can't be too mad at it. It is kind of a, a cheap way of, like, oh, yeah, well, there's big mantises here, and also a giant spider was here, and also there's a mysterious egg but yeah, that but was here. They're doing a, a science project. Um, yeah, which is another yeah. trope of these. But, I mean, it, it's fine. It really isn't distracting. None of it had They need... do it. I'd say it's, like, the best that they managed to do it. Yeah, no, they've got, like, a couple, like, towers. Yeah. Strung throughout the island. Pylons. Um, a couple uh, heating and cooling balloons, you know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, release the... Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead and release that cooling balloon. Uh, we get the first mention of a monster island, I think. Yeah, he says, like... <laughs> He says something like, like, this is some kind of Monster Island. Yeah. Uh, Later, they'll go on to call it Monster Land, mm-hmm. like, in canonically, like, even though it is an island with the monsters. Yeah. But I think in, like, everything else since then, it's Monster Island. Mm-hmm. And I remember this, the setting of this. I've always thought this was Monster Island, and I don't know if in the canon, Salgale Island remains the Monster Island. I don't think it does. But Probably not. in Save the Earth, there's a very similar looking island that's just called Monster Island. That's a stage and you can walk around and there's like kind of some similar looking buildings. And in my head, in my dumb little kid head mm-hmm. playing it, I was just always like, just like, yes, this is it. This is so cool. I'm playing in that one. <laughs> island ends up getting uh, frozen. Right. They uh, decide to freeze the monsters to save themselves, our cast of characters. They release a cooling balloon, you know, as you would to do that, and the balloon cools out place, and it uh starts uh, snowing. Do you know about the quote-unquote alternate ending to this movie? I don't think I do. What? That's the second thing. I never got around to it, but shitheads will tell you, like, did you know there's a deleted alternate ending to this movie? And it's bullshit that they say that. It's basically a lie because there's no alternate ending. It's just an extended cut of the ending that we got. Mm-hmm. and the only thing that's different is uh, you know how Godzilla kind of is walking away with Manila behind him, and Manila falls down, and Godzilla turns around and kind of holds him. They hug, and then they, they hibernate. They begin hibernation. Yeah. Well, the supposed deleted ending was that Godzilla just, like, he notices Manila fell down, and then he keeps walking for a while, and then he comes back and does oh. that. So it's not a deleted ending. It's not it's a fucking just, alternate ending. That's just, the same ending. It's just extended. Yeah. Yeah. But people will tell you, like, there was a deleted ending. Yeah, th- we got a pretty good cast of characters in my point. Like you said earlier, there's no real arc for anybody, but uh, they definitely do feel, like, comfortable, and they're kind of having fun. Mm-hmm. Um, the old guy's kind of cool. None of them really have, like, super strong personalities, except for that guy who's, like, freaking out and he wants to get off the island, who he cries at the end. Cause he's, Furukawa. He, yeah, Furukawa. Yeah. 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 He's He's got a bit of a personality where he's just, like, freaking out the whole time, trying to shoot people, mm-hmm. Um, really on edge. He's really annoying. Uh, to me, he was, because, like, he, from what they describe the situation as is like everybody volunteered like i don't know Mm -hmm. if they're getting paid or what but they're they volunteered to take part in this experiment i know everybody's entitled to uh you know uh, going stir crazy or whatever Mm -hmm. but he's just so annoying about it he's doing it at every chance he gets there's no point where he's like let me solve let me try to solve a problem or yeah let me try to deal with this he's always just like fuck, we have to stay on this island and do this experiment that I signed up to be a part of. It's Damn only, it. like, a couple more days, too. Like, he gets, like, like this whole movie happens in, like, maybe a week tops. And the the thing is that he he was supposed to stay there for much longer. Yeah. And he, he's been freaking out since before Godzilla shows up, I believe. Mm-hmm. 
and the experiment was supposed to go on longer, and due to time constraints caused by the monsters, they had to do everything faster, and ultimately I think all their research was destroyed because they ended up having to freeze the island to escape. Yeah. He he did get to go home early, and he was still whining the whole time. Yeah, And totally. he got nothing done, so... Yeah, fuck really him. Really annoying guy. Uh, he didn't annoy me that much, but I understand where you're coming from, and I guess I'd agree, fuck him. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't really get on my nerves. I guess I'm just saying he had a personality. Had yeah, a, yeah. Uh, definite. He trait. sticks out. Yeah. Um. Even the girl. The girl's all right. She doesn't really do anything annoying. Uh. She's got a great arm on her. Yeah. She's she able throw to those, throws those throws basketball sized lemons like nothing. Yeah. Right into Manila's mouth. Like. And perfect. he's not even opening his mouth. He's. It's like his no. barely open mouth. It is a narrow shot, and I gotta give her credit for that. You cannot ignore that. Yeah, she's okay. She doesn't really have much personality, though, like a lot Not of the other much. people. Her personality is just kind of being stupid. I'm serious. Yeah. Like, they make her stupid. Like, I guess her dad never told her fucking dick. I he, guess. Because, like, she's asking questions. He's like, uh, uh, what's his name? Goro? He, yeah. He's like, ah, something from Tokyo. He's saying, like, nobody from Tokyo could outrun you. Yeah. And she was saying, what is Tokyo? Like, her dad yeah. never bothered to fucking, like, in her 20 years she before... She doesn't know what the she fuck did, Jap... She died. knows what Japanese is. He's like, you're Japanese? And she goes, yeah. Yeah. That's so, the biggest city in fucking Japan. It's like a flagship city. Like, you should have known that, like, before the war. Like, at least, like, heard that, like, oh, Tokyo. Yeah, I know. And instead of saying, place. like, it's a city, he says it's a man-made jungle. And she's like, ah, jungle. <laughs> like, how she fucking... She might as well have been fucking native. Yeah, she really might as well have been. I guess they just didn't want to fucking buy another thing of brown paint. So they just <laughs> yeah. fucking got one girl and called her yeah. Japanese. Yeah, no, she's Japanese. But I, I, I do prefer that to, to the natives. Uh, if I, I, I'd like a, a little break from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just seeing uh, that same fucking tribe of people dance around in a circle again. Sing All a those song. people fucking painted brown. Mm hmm. It's just fuck it. It's got no purpose at this point. Yeah. Those seeing them fucking do their dance for the millionth time, isn't serving the plot in any way. Definitely. I guess the other person who has, like, the next most personality is our main guy, Goro. He's a reporter who uh, airdrops onto the island. It's never really specified how he knows they're there. He just says he, he smelled a story. Yeah, he smelled a story. It gives up pretty quick. Yeah. He, he just becomes a scientist, basically. He gets some pretty great photos out of it, I guess. But, I, I mean, there's tons of photos of giant monsters at this point, you know. Yeah. That's, yeah, that boom has already happened. Mm -hmm. Then there's, like, uh, the leader of the project is uh, a guy who kind of looks like he might be, like, the leader of a cult. It's like a Jim Jones-style cult. He's got some aviator sunglasses on. Oh, that, I think that's the main character for Mothra. Is it? Yeah. I didn't recognize him. I, I, I think it is. He's definitely been in something. But yeah, he's got a they give him like a tuft of white hair, which makes him really even though I think he's like not the oldest cast member, they all <laughs> they all refer to him as the old man. Yeah, yeah. I, I that's the only way I knew who they were talking about. Um Sarazawa shows up again. Yeah, he's like the second in command. Yeah, he's playing pretty a cool. very different character than he did in Sea Monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot. He's not a bad guy, he's just like a plain dude. Just a dude. Happy to help on the experiment. Pretty cool guy. I'd like to be friends with him. He seems pretty nice. I'd like to get to know him. Yeah. I'd like to shake his hand. Ah, yes. I'd like to have a drink of water with him. <laughs> I'd like to go play a round of golf with him. Ah, yeah. A good beer on an afternoon. I'd like to fuck his wife. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, He's pretty cool. And then everybody else, I don't think there's, there's anything There's like three else. or four people who never like even get to speak, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, they're just kind of... Nobody dies. You, you made a good point. It, like, there's all this, like, catastrophic shit happening to them yeah. over the course of the movie that if they killed off those background characters gradually throughout the whole thing, you'd get a much more, like, weighty story. Definitely. Yeah. And well, you, shit has consequence. You wouldn't lose anything because none of those characters have dialogue anyway. You'd create a sense of urgency by showing that, like, these things are having an effect on the plot and the, the characters in them. Yeah. And, like, you know, if you're not careful, some of these people might die. There's a scene where, like, rocks are just falling, like, this cave is collapsing, <laughs> yeah. and nobody seems to be worried very yeah, much. Yeah, they're kind of like, oh, I better get out of the way of those uh, rocks. That's uh, probably just another... That's I, probably a product of it being aimed towards kids. That, too. I would say. But also, they're 
they rarely ever kill anybody in these movies to begin with. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, outside of like the first one, or like that instance where they kill the alien girlfriend and mm-hmm. uh, uh, Astro Monster. Yeah, but they they definitely should have done that. You're right about that. Mm-hmm. So while we're still here and we haven't moved, right? Uh, I wanted to talk about. We've talked about this off script before, but it's been a while. So do you remember that uh, sm- anti smoking commercial with Godzilla yes, and Manila using I footage do. of this? I do remember that. What what did you think of that? And uh, what was your exposure to it? I thought it was good. Wasn't there another? It, it, was it an anti smoking one? It, it was or either anti smoking like, or it about was like dads it, or something. Yeah, something I think. about either dads or not smoking. I remember it being about not smoking because like it might be two different ones, but I remember it one being about dads. The Magugu effect, possibly the Magugu. Your, your effect. universe got a different one than mine. Very very possible. Completely possible. <laughs> How old were you when you think you saw that? Um, I was in about first or second grade, and that's when I was into Godzilla at the very first. At the moment? Yeah, at the moment. So yeah, I was probably six or seven when I saw that. I was like, that's cool. Okay, yeah. So that, that lines up about perfectly with me, because really? I I had not seen a Godzilla movie then, and I was thinking about this. Yeah, it might have been my first exposure to anything Godzilla related because that was like before I had even seen the 98 movie, which was the first Godzilla movie I saw. Mm -hmm. So in a way, this is the first Godzilla movie I ever saw. Mm. And I remember I thought it was really weird looking because I didn't like seeing people in like dinosaur costumes was really weird to me. Like, I think I've told you that like the seeing the Ninja Turtles cover at uh, Mm -hmm. Blockbuster really scared me (laughs) because I thought they were like dinosaurs or something. (laughs) But that was in the same vein where, like, I was weirded out, but I couldn't look away. Right. And I think I asked my mom what that was, and she said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's Which cool. furthers my uh, observation that it fucking barely looks anything like Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The suit's so fucked up. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> you want to get into Don Fry's, or? Yeah, I guess let's get into Don Fry's. Uh, now, I'm very sentimental about this movie in a way that I don't think I've been towards any of the other ones so far. Mm-hmm. And I guess there's a few more in the future, but this one might be my favorite, my childhood favorite. And I have just this soft spot. And I think maybe you would, maybe you were able to tell when I was watching it, but it's just like, so like, I've seen it all before so many times that like, I I tune out a little bit, Mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm picking up everything. But this is the one that I've already like thought about the most, I think. Mm -hmm. I remember watching it a couple years ago. I guess closer to like five years ago it was before 2014 came out <laughs> and uh, I was with Brandon and he pointed out that like how fucking retarded it was that they were like still doing the experiment past a certain point. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, that is really <laughs> stupid. But this is the one that I've like, you know, uh, invested the most thought into right? as far as these older ones go. So I don't have too much to say about it besides uh, it's got a real special place in my heart. My girlfriend's grandfather, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, he's really into these movies. Mm -hmm. I showed this to him the last time I went up there, and I think it was his favorite. But it it was funny getting his reaction. He was like, yeah, that was a good one. (laughs) That was a good one. And I think he said uh, that last shot, that last shot is pretty iconic of from yeah, this, as yeah. far as this movie goes, of just Godzilla and Manila like getting snowed on, mm-hmm. getting ready to hibernate. And he said, he said something like, well, that would make a good Christmas card. He's definitely right. It would make a good one. Yeah, absolutely. I just like this movie a lot. It's got good characters. Godzilla's ugly, but Manila made up for that when I was a kid, so now it's just kind of like when I watch it, I go on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Seeing your reaction to it just kind of as an unbiased, like you don't really have a special attachment Mm -hmm. to this one over any other ones. Uh, I think it also, part of it is just that it's decent. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this one a 6.5. I think that's what it deserves, so Mm -hmm. that's what it's going to get. All right. I, I can't really say, uh, much like the last one, nothing about this irritated me. Uh, nothing pissed me off. Nothing got old. Movie flowed pretty decently, a little better than the last one in terms of plot. We have the monsters in pretty well, like I said. Some pretty goofy stuff happens in this. Manila is a real source of comedy, uh, both, like, seriously, like, some of the stuff that happens just is, like, inherently, like, comical, uh, and it's meant to be. But there's more stuff to make fun of. There's plenty of jokes to be made about, you know, the that being the only woman in that camp. 
uh, of guys, of fellas. Uh, there's plenty of jokes to make about the guy, I don't know, the stressed out guy, like, killing himself or something. Yeah. But I guess my point is that this is a, a pretty decent one to make fun of, if you'd like. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of laughs to be had if you're not really paying much attention to the movie. Uh, there's some pretty decent monster fights. Not pretty decent. They're, they're like, they're just not irritating. Uh, I like that there's kind of no bullshit, like, Pretty quickly, Godzilla just kind of like breathes fire yeah. on a couple of the mantises, and they're just dead. Like it's just like that. Like he kills them, no problem. Which is kind of rare. There's always like you know, especially as we go on, there's going to be more and more drawn out fights. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, I don't have much of an attachment to this movie. It was okay, uh, just slightly above average. I'm giving it a six. Okay. A six is my rating. That's what it gets, and you don't throw a fit. Well. Next movie, I believe we're we're actually doing King Kong. Oh man! Because we switched around um, that gamma.